Now, in lesson three, you heard the terms magma and lava. There's a big difference between the two. Magma is molten rock deep inside the mantle. Heat and pressure cause it to move. When the pressure is too much, the magma is forced out onto the Earth's surface. Now, lava is magma that has come out of onto the Earth's surface. So when magma is forced up through cracks in the Earth's crust and erupts out onto the surface, it is called lava. Ah, Hawaii. I just love this place. The land is beautiful, the people are friendly, the weather is perfect, and the surfing is terrific. Personally, however, my favorite part of Hawaii is the volcanoes. If you like volcanoes, and all geologists do, then there's really no better place than Hawaii. When most people think of volcanoes, they think of the top blowing off a mountain and lava flowing out everywhere. Volcanic activity actually comes in many different forms, not all of which are as spectacular as a mountaintop eruption. Hawaii is made up of eight major islands, seven of which are inhabited. The islands of Hawaii were formed by volcanic activity. In other words, if it weren't for volcanoes, Hawaii would not be there at all. Hawaii is one of the best known volcanic hotspots in the whole world. A hot spot is a place where there has been continuous volcanic activity for a long time. In Hawaii's case, the volcanic activity started underwater. In fact, most volcanic activity occurs underwater, deep down near the ocean floor. Down there, the Earth's crust is fairly thin, so it's easier for magma to seep up from the mantle. When a volcano erupts underwater, the lava it releases cools very quickly. Over time, millions of years, this lava piles up. This is what happened in Hawaii. Over time, the lava continually erupting from the hot spot built up a pile that now reaches from the deep ocean floor all the way to the ocean surface where it became new dry land. Hawaiian volcanoes erupt gradually or little by little. The lava bubbles and gurgles and sputters rather than shooting up out of the earth all at once. There's still plenty of volcanic activity on some Hawaiian islands, which means the island chain is still growing. Let's compare the Hawaiian volcano to another type of volcano, the kind where a mountaintop explodes. This volcano erupted in the state of Washington, which is on the west coast of the United States. This is what Mount St. Helens looked like until the year 1980. Mount St. Helens proves that it is generally fairly easy to predict where a volcano will erupt. The hard part is figuring out when. Mount St. Helens has erupted many times over the course of 40,000 or so years, and during this time, the mountain size and shape has changed. Magma is constantly building up within Mount St. Helens. Unlike the magma in the Hawaiian volcanoes, however, the magma in this area is much stickier, so it does not gurgle and sputter up through little vents. Instead, the magma gets stuck. An incredible pressure builds up within the mountain. Eventually, the pressure becomes so intense that the mountain cannot hold it anymore, and boom! 
The eruption of Mount St. Helens was the most destructive volcanic eruption in U.S. history. Hundreds of homes were destroyed. Thousands of acres of forest were leveled when this mighty volcano erupted. In an instant, the top and one side of the mountain were literally blown away. Lava was not the main problem with Mount St. Helens. Rather, it was the immense amount of rock and ash that exploded into the air, as well as the landslides that followed as the mountain came crashing down into the valley below. This is what Mount St. Helens looks like today. It's still tall enough to rise above the clouds, but if you compare this to the first picture, you can see that it's not the same mountain it used to be. Mount St. Helens has erupted several more times after that day in 1980, and it still erupts occasionally to this day. Here's another place in the United States where there's lots of volcanic activity. This place is called Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is mostly in Wyoming with parts of it extending into Idaho and Montana. Yellowstone National Park is home to many interesting and beautiful sites. Like Hawaii, Yellowstone is situated on top of a hot spot a place where there's lots of magma close to the surface. In Yellowstone, the magma has stayed underground and has not erupted onto the surface. Yellowstone is famous for its geysers. A geyser is a rare geologic event that occurs when water seeps down through the cracks into the crust and meets up with hot rocks. When the water touches the hot rocks, it turns into steam. As more water seeps in, more steam is created and pressure begins to build. Eventually, all this heat and pressure force the steam to find a way back out. As in other types of volcanic activity that you have learned about, this process is caused by the buildup and release of pressure underground. The result is a geyser, steam and water spewing up out of the earth. These particular geysers are relatively small. They spurt and bubble all day long in water pools or springs which have a pretty bluish green color created by certain minerals that collect there. This geyser has a name. It's called Old Faithful. The word faithful means trustworthy or reliable. Old Faithful got its name because you can count on the fact that it's going to erupt several times each day. It is not possible to predict exactly when it will erupt, but it typically blows its lid about once every 90 minutes, give or take a few. Old Faithful spews out steam and hot water for anywhere from one to five minutes. It can spew as much as 8,000 gallons of water up to 185 feet in the air. Every day during the summer, when the park is full of visitors, hundreds of people gather around to watch the world's most famous geyser. Although they come in many forms, shapes, and sizes, all volcanoes and geysers have two things in common. They are the Earth's way of releasing heat and pressure from deep underground. And each one tells us a little more about the history of the Earth. And one other thing, all volcanoes and geysers are extremely hot. So always keep a safe distance and admire them from afar. <laughs>